Hey, what's up guys? It's Cam Wilson. Most of you may know me from the group VQ North. Uh, I work on a lot of Nissans and Infinities, 350Zs, G35s, 370Zs, G37s. I build engines and I build transmissions. One of the things that people have talked about that is not possible is putting a JK400, the most recent iteration of the CD09, CD01, behind a first generation 3.5 liter VQ35DE. Now, in this video, I'm gonna show you that yes, it is in fact possible to modify a JK400C, which we have right here, out of a Nissan 370Z Nismo with the synchro rev match, and we're gonna put it in a bell housing of a CD01 so that we can put this engine, or put this transmission behind a 3.5 liter engine. Now, a lot of discussion about this transmission is that the bell housings do not line up, so it's impossible and I put that in quotations, it's impossible to put it behind a first generation DE engine. Now, if you look at the two bell housings of a JK400 or a CD09 2007 HR, and you compare them to a first generation CD01, you can see that there are some large differences. Now on the CD01 bell housing over here, you can see the bull pattern, right? So you've only got one dowel and one thread hole on each side. Now on the JK400 bell housing, you can see that there are two holes for your 17 millimeter bolts on both sides. The top sort of lines up, the bottom, you know, it sort of lines up as well. Um, but this bell housing will not work behind a DE. And if you try to put this behind a DE, you're gonna be searching online for an adapter plate kit that's gonna add about a half inch to three quarters of an inch between your drivetrain and your engine. And you're gonna have to get a flywheel spacer. It's just gonna get really costly. So I'm gonna show you how you can turn this transmission into that bell housing. Now, if you go to sell the car, nobody's gonna fucking believe you because they're gonna say, no, it's a CD01. But I'm gonna explain in detail in this video the measurements that you need to take the part numbers that you require to make this happen and how you can do it for roughly under a thousand dollars without buying the transmission and without buying the bell housing from the previous transmission. All right, so here we are. We have a CD01 and we have a uh, JK400 C. So this CD01, it's missing the uh, fifth, sixth gear uh, shift fork just because I had to take it off. It was damaged. This one is being repaired and sold. Uh, so when you look at the center housing of the JK or the CD09 versus the CD01, all the bolts are the exact same. So giving a little bit more in-depth side-by-side -side here on these two transmissions, you can see the bell housing on the JK400 is quite different than the bell housing on the CD01. Now, if we look at the center housing bolt pattern, She's right on par. It's the exact same center housing bolt pattern. So this bell housing could technically go onto this transmission or this bell housing could go onto this transmission. They are inversely proportionate depending on, if you look, the size of the input shaft bearing. All the gear train is the exact same, minus the fact that CD01, the CD09 and the JK have added triple cone synchros on a couple of gears they are mechanically the same transmission down to the shifter everything the sensors what have you the counter shaft bearing is the same the windage trays are the same it's essentially the same unit the input shaft even has the same length to the pilot bushing but the input shaft believe it or not is the only thing stopping you from putting this transmission into this transmission's old bell housing. So I'm gonna to explain to you right now the, the real differences on why that's an issue. So to begin, we're gonna talk about this spacing right here. The spacing between your fifth gear and where the bearing sits. So you'd see where the bearing sits there, right? And you see the snap ring land. So the real issue here is that Nissan decided to switch up their input shafts three times. So actually four times, I'll, I'll get into that later. But for the sake of measurements here, we're gonna talk about the three different types of input shafts 
and bearings that Nissan has used. So in the, in the CD01, the first gen, they used a 100 millimeter by 25 millimeter bearing. In the 2007 HR, they decided to use a 95 millimeter by 25 millimeter bearing. Now, if you had a 2009 HR CD or 2007, sorry, if I said 2009 before, I digress. If you have a 2007 HR and you want to convert that transmission into a CD01 bell housing, you're in luck. All you have to do is take off this 95 millimeter bearing and put on the 100 millimeter bearing. Your CD01 bell housing will slip right on, it will bolt right up, seal it up, fill it with fluid, fucking ship it out the door. You now have an HR transmission behind your DE. The only issue with this is they're fucking rare because they only came out in 2007. So for this, we're talking about the more commonly available transmission, the JK series. So with the JK, what they decided to do, they used the 90 millimeter bearing. That's fine. You just throw on a 100 millimeter bearing. False. This is a 23 millimeter bearing, which means that the step lip here on the uh, input shaft with your fifth gear is now two millimeters higher. So here you can see the difference in spacing between the CD01 and the JK transmission. It's quite apparent. So on the JK, you're roughly 23 millimeters. I don't have this straight perfectly. And on the CD01, you are around 25. So the solution to this, as crude as it sounds, is pull the transmission apart, send this shaft to your machine shop, and have them clear two millimeters off of the fifth gear step right here. It will work. Everything is the exact same. Now, when I talk about Nissan using four different iterations, I'm talking about the fact that they upgraded the land where the synchro sit. They made it smaller and they used a thicker bulk ring. This is your fifth gear synchro right here, brand new from Nissan, which is actually going to be going into this CD or this JK, because in this JK, fifth gear is shot. Now, a lot of you may say, oh, you need to, you can buy an adapter plate, it's cheaper. Nine times out of 10, if you find a JK on the market, it needs fifth gear. It might even need sixth gear. So you're gonna pay for that adapter plate. You're either gonna put it in yourself and break your back on your driveway, or if you're a mechanic, you're gonna waste two to three hours, you know, installing it, and you're gonna find out <coughs> fifth gear grinds. So the reason that this swap is the best way to do it is because you have to remove this shaft. So when you remove this shaft, you can put the synchro on and you can repair that fifth gear grind. So in this transmission here, I'm going to be disassembling it. And I'm going to be replacing the fifth gear synchro, sending it to the machine shop. And then I have a brand new OEM 100 millimeter bearing. So this is the part number right here. 32203CD101. This is a brand new OEM 100 mil by 25 mil bearing. This bearing will seat perfectly in the CD01 case, and you'll be able to put that transmission behind any G35 350Z, and you're set. So I hope that this video has been informative for anybody who's been watching. If you made it this far without getting bored of all the technical specs, um, it's proven, so it will work. I don't know what the fuss is about. Don't buy an adapter plate. It will put your shifter back as far as the adapter plate is. So you may have issues hitting the center console. It's just way better to do this. When you open up the transmission, you can take a look to see if any other synchronizer rings are shot. Nine times out of 10, anybody who's doing this swap will be doing it behind a forced induction setup. And in that case, you wanna make sure your transmission's good. So you just, you wanna make sure everything's proper and with this, you can know that it's been done right. So one more thing that I mentioned at the start of the video is the JK has the synchro rev match sensor in it, which runs off of this plate here. It's got the sensor in there. 
Now, if you're doing a regular swap into a car that's not forced induction or doesn't have a tune on it, this is not useful to you. But for forced induction guys that are running a standalone, like a Haltech or a Link or an ECU Master, whatever you want, they can use this for boost by gear. So this sensor can actually tell the computer which gear you're in and you can control your boost pressure based on what the transmission is telling you. So you can add this as an auxiliary input into your uh, full ECU map and you can really, really dial in the power that you're putting down to the road as opposed to CDO1 where mm, there's nothing there. So this is a way better option if you're gonna go forced induction and you wanna have that control Doing this swap is such a better idea. Thanks a lot guys for watching. I'm just trying to help you guys out and show you the easiest way to do this and to make it the most cost effective for yourself. If you're gonna do this swap, you wanna tear the transmission apart and make sure it's good. So let me know how it goes for you. Um, if you have any questions or comments or if you wanna argue with me about it, I got no problem telling you what time of day it is. Anyways, have a great, great one. Enjoy the video. Share it to your friends that think that it's not possible. I'm just here fixing transmissions and I'm doing it right. So what can I say?